Hello everyone, this is Mohammad Kathawala with my co-host Aditya and Ashwarya. Welcome to the Mobile UX podcast where we cover interesting web technologies and communities. Uh, so in the first half we'll talk about bottom navigation in the Capybara theme of view storefront and in the second half we'll discuss some other contribution that we'll be doing in the Capybara theme. Yeah, bottom navigation has been really in my mind since the day we started working with the Capybara theme. The way that whole th- situation works is just interesting to me because it doesn't really adhere to the way bottom navigation has worked in all other mm-hmm. apps for the longest time. The main problem that I see with the bottom navigation in Capybara is that the routes that are defined in the bottom navigation um, don't build stacks. So like mm-hmm. that problem, what that stems to as a user level is when you can navigate from like the home page to a category page or a product page, you're lost as a user as to where you are in the site. Your context is completely gone because you're not in the home page, you're not in the menu, you're not in the wish list, etc. Mm-hmm. And because we have bottom navigation, we give the user capability to move between these tabs at any point. And when we're because we're giving that capability, it's really easy for them to lose that product page, and that whole app-like experience makes it. It's not exactly obvious how to get back to that product page and that's a really bad experience and it's going to be lowering it's not good for conversion first of all but it's also just a bad user experience Mm -hmm. because the user's confused about where they are in the site and where the next step is where they came from and stuff like that i think uh to solve this we're we need to have a deeper understanding of how routes work in bottom navigation uh what that how they be how they should behave and what how they behave relative to each other specifically is how their routes are maintained and if they should be maintained when they should be where they should be available where they maybe shouldn't be uh, and so as we're going to be giving this to our customers we need to understand we need to i think we should fix this and uh, kind of work this out in a way that makes sense for users hmm. So basically how bottom navigation works is uh, there are a few uh, routes, uh, elements in the bottom navigation. Each element have its different routes and in the routes uh, we keep the stack of the uh, visited page or uh, any the uh, we keep the track of the navigation for each route. This is how uh, usually bottom navigation behaves over the websites and uh, uh, in Capybara whenever we are uh, in any page other than the bottom nav- uh, pages which are listed in bottom navigation so we are totally lost that where are we in the route or uh, the user fe- uh, see, uh, feels like he is uh, lost and uh, we should have at least signed that uh, you are in this route of the navigation or in the website like you are in the category category section or you have navigated to the category section once we are in a product page or in uh, some uh, checkout page uh, there is no highlighted of any icons or any routes in the bottom navigation yeah so um, i just want to throw out some context for people who may be uh, listening but don't have a clear grasp on what navigation so should look like in applications Um, The simplest way navigation can work is you have a series of pages and you go through them linearly, so one at a time, and there's no jumping around between different pages. But uh, when we go into bottom navigation, we are choosing to have uh, different parallel routes of navigation. So in a way, if you think about it as like you're traversing through like your create your own story kind of book, what you're doing is you have your home page, like all your four tabs at the bottom are different stories that you're going through. And you can pause each one and go into different ones and you expect and they should behave where they can be run parallelly and you can jump between them and not lose the state that you've been at. Yes. So a great example <clears throat> that Google has for this uh, on their blog about um, how no- bottom navigation works, they have this great example where they're using like a pretend music app and they open mm-hmm. a artist's album or something and then they jump to another tab and come back to the tab where they opened it and it's still um, open to the page that they left it at. Mm-hmm. And that's where we're, that's what we're not seeing in Capybara, which is when we go to a home page and we open up a product page, we're no longer, since it's an e-commerce page and you've, you're not really in the home page anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you say after that you jump to like a profile page and come back to the home page, that product page isn't associated with that home page in any way, and that's where like the problems are coming through, and that's where we need to. Um, that's what we. That's what we want to solve. So if we just ignore this uh, add to uh, cart icon, uh, there are four main uh, elements. So in uh, the, uh, if, 
in bottom navigation we need to use them as a routes and uh, for using them as a parallel separate routes uh, and to have their history maintained uh, we should use uh, the view router and uh, we should maintain uh, history of each router uh, within itself and these uh, four elements will be behaving like an uh, different routes uh, we need to push the browser's links on this route uh, routes Uh, different routes and uh, we have to maintain the stack and uh, w- uh, whenever user wa- wants to navigate back or forth in the, those routes it should be easily available for the user so i know we don't have a lot of information on this but this is a question that's running through my mind right now is if we manage different histories for the different routes and then we use there's also a browser back button so do you know do you either of you know like exactly wh- what the relationship between those two is like if i'm if i switch from one route to another then i click back is it going to take me to my old route or is it going to take me to the starting of the route i just entered like do you know how that's that relationship works or is that something we're going to have to research uh, so the uh, history of browsers and the history we are making in the these stack are totally different and they are interrelated it's like a browser is maintaining its own stack of url that we uh, user is navigating through and in this uh, bottom navigation we usually do is like we have four or five multiple routes and we uh, maintain history of each routes uh, we put uh, any url which is accessed through this route in this stack and with an- another element uh, from the bottom navigation if we browse some navigations then th- those urls will will be stored in that different route these uh, urls which are uh, uh, which are hit by these uh, routes will be always stored in the browser stack for the user history but these we are uh, here we are but uh, uh, just creating stack o- different stacks of uh, the urls that u- user are visiting depending on from which route he is navigating we are just storing the uh, that url in the uh, that specific route Okay so basically at the website level we're managing we're segregating the history based on routes but the browser back button is going to be the universal yeah. as it happened mm-hmm. back button where if you jump between routes it's going to jump you between those between routes the again. Routes, yes. That makes sense. Cool. But oh, this is starting to feel kind of like we're going a little bit over complicated. Do you think at that point what do you think we should keep bottom navigation what would you say ashwarya yeah? uh, so uh, if we just see to uh, a bottom navigation and we uh, we know that uh, this is how bottom navigation works yeah. so uh, what i honestly thinks is uh, in the uh, um, e-commerce all these uh, things aren't that much necessary like we have seen in this uh, music application and uh, i have seen the bottom navigation in gmail and youtube uh, so there are uh, n number of contents and n number of uh, places where user can navigate and can have different routes but e-commerce is a very simple application where users have a category product and there is a checkout process and uh, moreover there is some things like wish list profile page and these uh, but the main major uh, kpi of uh, the uh, e-commerce is its category and product so i don't think it's uh, this uh, complex thing like bottom navigation is too much required in e-commerce but it's a nice to have thing means it usually depends on uh, e- different cases how your uh, specific e-commerce is like maybe something marketplace if someone is building a marketplace then it's uh, in that complex scenario bottom navigations are necessary but maybe if you are having a simple e-commerce then it's not that necessary yeah i think that makes sense i see what you're saying and that's maybe why most e-commerce actually use hamburger navigation yes. because it's a simpler kind of a linear s- approach to how you navigate where you only have one direction that you're moving in and mm-hmm. if you want to switch that you go all the way from the start and that's what the user expects but when yeah. you're doing bottom you're allowing the user to have multiple mm-hmm. routes going at the same time there uh, also in kpbara we have uh, one thing which is kind of weird to me which is uh, the menu uh, route mm-hmm. which actually opens uh, an overlay right yes. and which yeah. mm-hmm. uh, this i think should be a uh, fixed or uh, as you mentioned in bottom navigation this should uh, it will all it will be in much simpler way yes because here you just click on menu and you have uh, an overlay where you where you have all the category hierarchy and when yeah. you click on one of them 
then it is lost and you go to a category page uh, so yeah uh, this is like uh, really weird uh, that if we are uh, having a bottom navigation and we are clicking on some element uh, instead of having a route uh, way uh, the ux is j- uh, just pop up or i mean just an overlay <laughs> over yeah. the screen <laughs> so this is uh, kind of weird it's definitely very confusing at a user level because the first time you show up it all makes sense because you don't have any you haven't been there before so you don't expect anything from it so the first time you show up it's like oh a page shows up i select the category and i end up at the page then when you come back to that page from say like your profile page mm-hmm. you expect to be on that category page that you yes. navigated to but yes. because it's an overlay it's going to mm-hmm. open the overlay again mm-hmm. and in fact it's not going to navigate you to the category that you were at before because actually it's just an overlay so yeah. the category you were at before was a page that's no longer in the stack anywhere yeah even the browser's back button can't <laughs> navigate it <too. laughs> right. you are helpless not even the browser can help you so yeah, that's going to be interesting. Uh, I wonder if, I guess, at that point, the, there's two possible solutions to that. Is either you build out a page or like a, a route that starts you from like the navigation tree, mm-hmm. and instead of making that an overlay, you make it part of the stack, and it's like pages. Or the alternate is SFUI gives you um, an option to have your categories in the header on mobile too. Yes. And then when you click on those, it opens as an overlay. And then it's clear to the user, okay, this is not part of the stack that I'm building. Mm-hmm. And it's going to just be an overlay. So that route, that bottom navigation tab is going to open your categories page. And then on that categories page, you have like those um, tabs that you can click on. And f- it's going to be at that point, it's going to be more of a filtering to the user. They're gonna feel. They're gonna look at it as a filter and drilling down in your categories instead of navigation. Mm. And we're talking about these like, oh, the routes and the stacks and the navigation. And like, it probably seems like something that customers don't finally care about at the end of the day. But it's one of those things that they don't know they care about until they see it come like like this, where it's wrong, or mm. when they see it right. And it's a subconscious thing where it clicks or it doesn't click, and it's not gonna click, and they're not gonna know why they don't like it, but they're mm. not gonna like it. Yeah. And all this uh, thing is uh, basically related to mobile only. In desktop, everything is fine. And uh, we have uh, this restriction in mobile and the space. So we need to smartly manage the space. So uh, all these things comes in the role that we have different routes. We should have different route or we should have a hamburger menu. Uh, so, so Muhammad, you were talking about uh, the uh, uh, to modify the product page and not show the bottom navigation in uh, uh, yeah. the product page. So I really like the idea about uh, keeping uh, treating the product page as a leaf node uh, uh, which you can access from any route and it will just show up as a uh, single page yes so yeah (coughs) actually the uh, as we are talking about this bottom navigation disadvantages so uh, one of the least thing which we can do with kp bara right now is uh, we can remove the bottom navigation from the product page because yeah, uh, product page is uh, the most important page of yes. an e-commerce site. Mm-hmm. So if a user comes to a product page, then he shouldn't be distracted with any of the other navigation. Yeah. He mm-hmm. should just be directed to checkout only. Yes. So that, that should be a funnel type for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, if we remove the bottom navigation, it will be more sensible there. Mm-hmm. And so uh, he can just add to cart, and there should, and we can probably give a back button where, on the product page, where from which from where he can go to the previous route. Yes. So this will at least make it uh, simpler than what is mm-hmm. uh, what is what is there now, mm-hmm. because uh, if if the user is uh, right now, if the user is on the product page, and if he clicks on any of the bottom navigation link, then th- that product page is lost. already lost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, that should we should we should at least stop that. Yes. Mm-hmm. User should be uh, directed uh, only directed to checkout page from the product page if he mm-hmm. wants to uh, do the checkout, mm-hmm. and there there shouldn't be any other distraction. Yes. Uh, there should only be a back button there which mm-hmm. will uh, yeah smart. take the user user to the previous page. Yeah. Like if he is on from the home if he, if he has come from the home page then it will go to home page. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's smart because um, even from a like when we let them jump around using bottom navigation from the product page, mm-hmm. um, 
subconsciously they don't know that they're losing that yes, page because yes. they expect it to be in a route. Yes. So when we give them a back button, it's very conscious that like, hey, I'm going to lose this if I leave right. this. So either yeah. save it to a wish list or something or put mm -hmm. it in my cart mm -hmm. so that I don't lose it. And then I go back. It's much more deliberate like action, mm -hmm. which is good. And then at that point, I guess the cart thing, what we would do is give like a little floating action button at the bottom mm -hmm. or like where it is right now, but just without that. And so we mm -hmm. just fix it right there mm -hmm. and you can open it up right there. So that's always accessible, which yes. is so yeah probably we can have a separate a header for the product page yeah uh, i mean it is already a most important page of the uh, site yeah, right yeah. so we can we can actually have a separate header for that yeah and that won't much hurt yes. hurt much <laughs> that won't hurt hurt much yeah yeah even it will also increase the fold area for the product page so <laughs> you can see more information there and uh, it's good to have something removed in mobile view uh, for the better space management yeah. uh, there's something else I wanted and to probably see. we can do it for the category page also because there also you don't need the bottom navigation <laughs> once you are cate on category page. Well, that's something we would have to work out because it depends on what we classify as top level navigation. Like product page is definitely like, especially on mobile, on desktop maybe so, but on mobile, a, pro a product page is not a top level navigation. Right. So it can't be a sibling of home profile and then maybe pro a category, who knows, and wish list. It's like a child of all of them. Mm. So that's why we don't want to have bottom navigation there because that confuses the user on what the relationship is. If it's not in a route, then where is it? Mm -hmm. But the category page, I feel like if I have a category page, I've created some filters, I've added some price ranges and uh, men's, women's, whatever. Yeah. And I want to keep that there. Yes, I don't want to yes. lose that. So I think it would make sense to keep that as like a full on route. Mm -hmm. And then we can add the category navigation. So I think that's okay to keep that. We'll keep bottom navigation there on the bottom. Uh, so uh, we are discussing this whole implementation and the implementation about bottom navigation and how it should be in Capybara. We are discussing this in the community and uh, if you have any thoughts regarding this and if you have any suggestion you can uh, go to the uh, Capybara theme channel of Slack of view storefront and uh, tell us your valuable comments and how we should move further in this direction. Also, um, I think in the next episode or so, we should also discuss the possibility of using, actually adding a hamburger navigation yeah, option. Right. So that's going to maybe clear up some of this stuff. So moving to the next part of our podcast, we have two uh, good improvements that uh, we're going to contribute in the Capybara team. So the first one is uh, in the Capybara, I don't know why this uh, notification was uh, <laughs> slightly <laughs> yeah, just weirdly sized. Yes. So uh, this should be upgraded, improved. Uh, we have just made it a full width uh, notification. And then after that, um, we had some uh, kind of quality of life improvements around the um, empty states and the pages where the content doesn't fill up the whole viewport. Um, this was more of, it's not really anything that was game breaking. Basically what we wanted to do was uh, on desktop and on mobile, if there wasn't enough content to fill up the whole view, the footer would shoot up to like the top of the page or something. And then there were some empty state like the wish list page and like the, yeah, I think the wish list and error page. Yeah there was some fixed margins defined. So it mm -hmm. worked fine on like bigger displays, but as soon as we went to smaller displays, you have to like scroll to get to the mm -hmm. bottom of where mm -hmm. to like, oh, get back to the home page to like find it. So what we did is gave them, uh, we defined the spacing using flex, uh, flex box and aligned them in a column and told the whole thing to be no bigger than, I think we took 100% of the viewport and then we subtracted the header on mobile and we have subtracted the header and the footer on desktop. Yes. So that lets us put the footer exactly at the bottom of the page, like no space after that. And it takes up like a nice neat amount of space and it always looks perfect on all screen sizes. And all buttons are always accessible. So you can see right here and right there. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is definitely a enhancement in the user experience because uh, in the first uh, before this improvement uh, whenever user navigates to the uh, this error page so firstly he is navigated to er error page that and sucks. then uh, yeah that sucks and uh, this uh, home page and back button aren't uh, <laughs> available oh, 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 oh. 
so if he just by chance uh, scroll it down so he'll get to to these yeah. these life saving buttons <laughs> And this is also uh, cool for, especially nice on mobile, because seeing the footer kind of breaks the immersion of being in an app. Yes. So having mm-hmm. those always just beyond the fold is great to, just for visual perspective, because it never feels like you're in a non-perfect application, because apps don't have footers. Like, no, mm-hmm. this is not like a thing that they do. So it just kind of keeps the immersion going. And I think we also subtracted the height of the bottom navigation, too, from yes. the mobile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's just below that line. Nice. So we have covered this uh, interesting thing about bottom navigation routes and these two improvements. Yes, lots of strong feelings around bottom navigation <laughs> and their role in e-commerce. And oh, also I'm going to link below the bottom navigation article that we used from mm-hmm. Google. Um, they also have some conflicting views that I don't completely agree with, but we gave selective <laughs> information today to favor our side. Uh, yeah, and so you guys can take a look at this. This is a really great way to get a quick understanding of bottom, bottom navigation and why it's worked the way it does. All right, toodaloo. Bye-bye. Thank you.